Tyler here, and I'm excited to show you my latest project, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy Milano. This is Peter Quill's spaceship, and I'm excited to show you all of the fun details and features, as well as some of the building techniques for this giant spaceship. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see, this build is quite large and doesn't even completely fit within the frame of the video, but uh, it's actually two feet wide from one wingtip to the other, and it's a foot from the front nose to the back engine back here. So it's quite large. I was not real happy with the uh, size of the official Lego sets. I thought they were a little small. The first one was a little bigger, and then the second one was a lot smaller. So I thought, hey, you know what? I want to make one that's a little more movie accurate. It's probably, in all honesty, probably still a little bit too small. But I thought uh, this would be a nice kind of in-between size uh, that would allow me to actually use the canopy piece from the latest Milano Lego set. Uh, as well as some of the minifigures from it. So let's take a look at some of the details here in the cockpit. Now if we take a look at the canopy here, uh, the canopy does open and you can sit one, two, three minifigures inside the cockpit. Uh, if I take them out, you can see those, uh, those nice orange, uh, very retro looking seats that uh, we are used to seeing there in the Milano. And I used the uh, official canopy from the latest Milano set. However, I extended the, uh, the shape of it a little bit using a clear wedge plate here in the back, as well as some uh, clear tiles and slopes. Now taking a look at the wings, or specifically the wing tips here, we've got one, two, three, four different uh, wing blades here, or wing tips. And all of them are pretty flexible and can be moved around a little bit to uh, kind of capture that maneuverability. This one in the back actually moves up and down as well as rotating side to side. Uh, so it kind of gets, uh, captures that really maneuverable, almost eagle wing type look uh, of the Milano's wings there. Now here in the back, we've got a lot more detail. There's a lot more sharp edges and different uh, faceted surfaces. And engines, we've got a main engine here as well as some of these smaller engines which can be uh, changed to, depending on the direction of flight. And uh, we've also got this window in the back. There's a small window underneath the back engine. And I used the General Grievous canopy from the General Grievous set. Uh, I thought that kind of matched that really faceted, uh, interesting window that's on the very back of the Milano there. Now here on the underside, it may not be seen a whole lot, but I tried to include a fair amount of detail, like these uh, engine thrusters here, as well as some machine guns here that we see them using quite a bit in the film. And I also included this empty space here. There's kind of a, a square gap there, and that is for the stand, which simply slides right in that slot so that you can remove the Milano from the stand and swoosh it around to your heart's content, which I have definitely been doing a fair amount of. Now I know what some of you are probably already thinking. You're wondering, does it have an interior? And I am happy to say, yes, it does. You simply remove the top portion here. Interior. Now here inside we've got two main areas. There's kind of the, the main room section here with a table and baby Groot and Rocket is watching there. Um, and then in the back here we've got some bunks uh, with that same dark orange uh, coloring so that you can uh, let Drax take a nap back there. And you can even see that that uh, canopy windscreen piece there in the back, you can actually see through it there. And that's the details on the interior. I used some trans um, blue tiles for some, uh, to kind of give the effect of some lights in there. And there you have it. 
Now some of the things that I'm really excited to show you is some of the techniques that I used uh, on this build because it's a very unique shape, especially here in the nose where we've got a very sharp point coming together here, as well as having this whole pointed section be at a 45 degree angle. So making all of these complex shapes meet up in a way that did justice to the actual ship is a little bit tricky. So if I take off some pieces here, you can see how I did that. So this whole nose section is actually held on by one little Technic pin here. I used some Technic uh, lift arms that have a 45 degree angle in order to put a pin right there in the center. And then I simply used some Technic pieces on the inside here that allow me to attach that pin to that, that point right there. And I simply made for this front section two walls. Um, that are connected with these brackets here. And it all kind of meshes together right there. And I used these 45 degree slope uh, plates to have everything line up just right. Now here on the wings, I used a similar technique to one that Lego has used several times. And that is to use these bricks along a 45 degree or any wedged plate um, and then just simply attach it to some sort of bar. And I use some bar plates here and that lets me place this at a 45 degree angle and kind of capture the nice slope of that front edge, especially along this section here. And it also gives you kind of some, some flaps to play with and kind of have a little more maneuverability there. Now here in the back of the wings, we've got a lot of angular plates that come together and I wanted to capture sort of that nice overlapping shapes of those triangular elements. So I used some of these uh, trapezoid flag pieces here, as well as some uh, larger tail fin pieces and I simply mounted them sideways on brackets which allowed me to kind of overlap them. This plate is, this is, this wing is one plate higher than this one so that they overlap and don't collide with each other there. And then that gap is simply filled with those trapezoid flags there. So that was a uh, really fun element to try and capture and I think it turned out pretty nice. Now here on the top of the ship, uh, there are kind of some intakes that have to be right behind the canopy and I kind of wanted to capture the, a very accurate shape because they kind of have this interesting angular uh, shape to them. And I kind of on accident found these uh, sword blades, which is what these are. They're, they're just a, um, a sword blade, which I used on a clip on the side here to uh, help them get to the right angle and they kind of create a really interesting shape there as well as kind of capturing the the color I was trying to keep a lot of the metallic uh, looking shiny surfaces there and those blades allow me to do that and capture that shape at the same time so I was really pleased with uh, kind of the happy little accident in finding those pieces and how well they work there. Well, that's all. I thank you so much for watching and taking a look at the details and features and some of the techniques that I used in building this. It was so much fun to build, so I hope you enjoy it. I certainly enjoyed building it, and I also enjoy just flying it around. So thanks for watching. Take care.